Hello, welcome to section two of another episode of our te hypothesis testing. Um, so 8.2 is super similar to 8.1 um, in that we're still testing um, means. So we're trying to find the difference between two samples. Um, so two different means, but this time um, our two population standard deviations from our two samples are unknown. So we don't know the population standard deviation, which means you're only going to be given the sample standard deviation. So remember all the other chapters where we keep having to decide what kind of standard deviation am I given? Is it from a population or is it from a sample? So same thing here. Um, that's what you're deciding between for section one and section two. In section two, when you're not given the population standard deviation and you're only given the sample standard deviation, the formulas are much more intense. So if you look to find our test statistic, there's two different situations. So that's why there's two formulas. This one looks a lot crazier than this one. Um, the way that you're going to tell the difference is you're going to look in the problem. It'll tell you either the variance are equal or the variances are not equal. So that's what you're reading for. So if the problem says they're equal, you're going to be using this one. If it says they're not equal, you're going to be using this one. What it means when the variances are equal or not equal is that the variance, if you think back, is the square of the standard deviation. Remember, if you square root a variance, that'll get you the standard deviation. Um, we're talking about the population ones here. So in general, if you're doing this in real life, um, sometimes you'll know the variance um, versus the standard deviation. And so if these are things that you know are gonna be equal or not equal, depending on whatever situation's happening, that's how you know what situation to use. Um, in our problems, it'll always tell you so you don't have to like figure it out for yourself. You just need to read properly. So if it says that they're equal, use this crazy formula. If they're not equal, use a slightly less crazy formula. And then the other difference for this um, section is that when we find our critical values to figure out our rejection region, um, we're looking for TO again. So that means we need to use our green distribution chart. Mine is yellow because that's all I had. Okay, but that's the one you're using. Remember, um, at the top, it should say T distribution. So I don't have any additional notes. I've pr printed all of those for you. So all we're doing is examples because it's very similar to last time. So for these ones, um, for this example, we have the results of a state math test for random samples of students taught by two different teachers at the same school are shown at the left. Can you conclude that there is a difference in the mean math test scores for this two student or for the students of the two teachers? Use alpha equals 0 0.10. Assume the populations are normally distributed and the population variances are not equal. Okay. So first, variances are not equal. Whew, this is a good thing. We get to use the not so crazy formula. This is good. Okay. So before we start though, let's check our conditions. These are the same as last time, but remember last section we had four. One of them was that we knew the population standard deviations. Here we don't know them. So because they only give us the sample standard deviations, that's why it's S1, S2, instead of that like circle O thing um, with a hat. So the only conditions that we really need to check is that we have random samples. We have independent samples and we have normal distributions. So to check for random, um, they told us it was random samples. Oops. So that's given to us. For independence, remember we have independent and de dependent samples. We just need to see if the two samples that we have are related to each other. So we're talking about two samples. Um, so these are students taught by two different teachers at the same school. So if they're students taught by two different teachers in a math class, you're not gonna have the same people in each of the samples. So um, I'm gonna say the two samples contain different people. So that's how we have independent samples. And then lastly for normal, we're either looking for it to say normally distributed or 
um, the sample size N1, N2 has to be greater than 30. So if we look at our N1 and N2, they're both less than 30, so that doesn't work. But it did say normally distributed, so that helps. Okay, so now we can proceed, now that we've got everything checked off. Okay, so for our hypotheses, this is exactly the same as how we did it last section. So we have our two means, mu1, mu2. In our problem, it said that, can you conclude that there is a difference in the mean math test scores for the students of the two teachers? So it's either there is a difference or there's not. So different would be does not equal, and that always goes in HA, so that means HO is gonna be an equal sign. Cool, um, alpha they told us was 0.10. Okay, here we go. So test statistic. We are plugging everything in to this formula right here. I'm just gonna rewrite it just so it's easier to plug in. Okay, so I just rewrote the formula. Here we go. They gave us the first mean and the second mean. So I'm just gonna plug those in. So I have 473 minus 459. On the bottom, we have a giant square root. Then, S1 squared is the sample standard deviation of the first sample, so that's the 39.7, and we're squaring that number. Divided by N1, they told us that's eight. Okay, then I have a plus sign. Then I'm gonna do the same thing for the other sample. So, the standard deviation of the second sample is 24.5, square it, divided by n2, which is 18. If you type this into your calculator correctly, on top it subtracts to 14, on the bottom, along with the square root, I think you end up with something like 15.177 something something something. So as long as you're getting those numbers, great. Divide them out. Remember to not round or to cut off any decimals until the very end. So remember the copy paste function in your calculator, very important. Okay, um, so you should end up with a t-score, a test statistic of 0.922. Okay, from there, our rejection region. So we draw a curve. Um, remember, you're always shading based on your HA. So our HA says does not equal. So that means we are shading both sides, making this a two-tailed test. Then, in order to find our TO, Remember, we are using our green chart here. I'm going to scoop back up to our formulas really quick because when we're finding TO, when variances are not equal, our degrees of freedom, we used to just go N minus 1, but now we have two Ns because we have N1 and N2. So you're going to choose the smaller one. So N1 for us was 8, N2 was 18, so the smaller number is 8. 8 minus one is seven. So whenever variances are not equal, you're using the smaller n and then subtract it by one. So then when you use your chart, I know I'm using degrees of freedom of seven, so I'm gonna go down to seven there. Then on top, you have to decide whether you're using a one tail or a two tail test and then look at alpha. So for us, because this was does not equal, it was two tailed because we shaded both sides. So look at two tails and alpha was 0.10. So this is the column we're looking at. And crisscrossing, we get 1.895. So because I have two sides, one of them's positive and one of them is negative. There we go. Then we're looking for where would our test statistic of 0.922 go? So because the middle is zero, it should be like somewhere here, 0.922. It's not shaded in. So that would be fail to reject. Okay, so our decision is the same as before. Our test statistic of 0.922 is less extreme because we fail to reject than our rejection region. So 
So that means we do not have evidence of HA being true. Our HA said that the two means are not equal, so they're different from each other. So I'm going to say that the mean math scores are different. And we don't have evidence of that. Cool. So that's this section. I want to do one more example where this time the variances are equal with our crazier formula. So our second and last example. This time we have a manufacturer that claims that the mean operating cost per mile of its sedans is less than that of its leading competitor. You conduct a study using 30 randomly selected sedans from the manufacturer and 32 from the leading competitor. Results are shown. Um, and then at 0.05 for alpha, let me just fill that in now. Can you support the manufacturer's claim? Assume the population variances are equal. So again, they've told us which formulas to use. So again, starting with the conditions, we need randomness, independence, and normality. So they told us randomly selected, cool. For independent samples, do are we using the same cars for both samples? Um, they're talking about um, the two samples being from the manufacturer and the competitor, so obviously they can't be the same cars. Okay, and then normality, either it has to say in the problem that it's normally distributed or our sample sizes are 30 or bigger. And we have 30 and 32, so both of those work. And one is greater than or equal to 30, so is N2. Done. <coughs> okay, hypotheses. So HO and HA. So again, reading through my problem, um, I think it very, at the beginning, it said the mean operating cost is less than that of its leading competitor. So that's a less than sign. Less than signs usually go in HA. So that means my mean one is less than mean two. Um, they said manufacturer's cost was less than the competitor. So that means manufacturer is technically sample one, competitor is technically sample two, um, which is also how I labeled my X1, S1, N1, anyways. Um, so for our HO, that means it has to be the opposite sign. So instead of facing left, it's facing the right with the equal sign. Okay, the funnest part, our test statistic. I'm going to rewrite the formula just so it's easy for us to plug into again. Okay, so here's our formula. I started plugging in x1 bar minus x2, so that's those two numbers right there, on the bottom. So the first part of for our formula is n1 minus 1. So n1 was 30, minus 1 would be 29. I'm not going to write it all out because, you know, I can do subtraction in my head. That gets multiplied with our standard deviation from the first sample squared. So s1 squared, so that would be 0.05. Squared. Then I'm adding that to n2 minus 1. So 32 minus 1 would be 31. S2 squared would be 0.07 squared. On the bottom of n1 plus n2 minus 2. So that would be 30 plus 32 minus 2. Then I get to multiply all of that by another square root where I have 1 over n1, which was 30, plus 1 over n2, which was 32. The craziest part of all this is probably plugging it into a calculator. So on top, you're going to get negative 0.03. On the bottom, when you type this into a calculator, these are the numbers you should get. Sorry. 
the first um, st the square root, you should end up with something like 0 0.050 something, something, something. Lots of decimals. Sorry. And then the second square root, I think you end up with 0.254 something, something, something. If you're having trouble multiplying this out or um, typing this into your calculator, please let me know. I would love to help you. Just come see me on, on my office hours. But um, there's too many people with different calculators, so I can't do that all at once in a video. Okay, then. Um, once you have these set up, you should end up with negative 1.930 something. I'll leave it there. Okay, so that's our test statistic. Then for our rejection region, um, our HA was less than, so that means we're shading to the left. And remember, our center is zero. So using our chart, for this one, when we're looking at our degrees of freedom, it's a different formula. So if you flip back to the front, on this side, our degrees of freedom is n1 plus n2 minus 2. Our n1 plus n2 minus 2 ended up being 60. So I'm going all the way down here until I see 60. And then at the top, this was a one tail test because we only shaded one side. And so alpha was 0.05. So that's where we're looking. And then go all the way down. You should see 1.671. But if you look at our picture, um, we're on the left side of our graph, so that should end up being negative, negative 1.671. Okay, so remember, if it's on the right side, it'll always be positive. Left side is always negative because zero is right in the middle. Then our test statistic was negative 1.930. That's further away from the zero, so that's like somewhere in our shaded region, which means we get to reject. Yay. Cool. Then the decision is exactly the same as before. Just reword stuff so that it says your HA in terms of this problem. Okay, that's it for this section. Um, good luck. Let me know if you have questions or need help typing things into the calculator. Have fun. Bye.